Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about geodesy for geologists. Now, geodesy is a science of measuring the Earth's shapes using coordinate systems to locate yourself on the Earth's surface. It's used for surveying and used quite extensively in the mining, mineral, and oil industries, as well as other as well as other uses. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, several parts. This will be done in several parts. So part one is understanding why geodesy is important. Part two is looking at latitude, longitude, and ellipsoids. Part three is looking at datums. Part four, looking at map projections. And part five, looking at coordinate systems. So let's move on to part one. Introduction for geodesy, understanding where we are. So geodesy is a science of actually measuring the shape and the, and the effective use of coordinate systems, which is obviously very important because you need to locate where you are. Uh, it's locating something in a 3D space, so that's uh, um, moving north-south, east-west, and then in terms of elevation as well. I'm going to talk about spheroids, datums, and projections, geoids, use of GPS, coordinate systems, and petrotechnical software, and also the use of abuse of geodesy. So first of all, coming from the oil industry where we're safety conscious, a little bit, a bit of a safety moment. There's quite a useful app called What Three Words. And the folks behind the app divided the Earth into three meter squares. And each square has a unique three word identifier. So for example, as you can see on the picture here, geese mirror arrives, gives you a particular place in space. It's very useful in cases of emergency. So if you have this app downloaded on your device, it's available for both Android and iOS. It can be used in a situation where you've had an emergency, you're dialing 911 or 999 or whatever the emergency code is in your country, and you've got a bad mobile system and you need to pinpoint your location so that emergency services can come and rescue you. And what three words enables you to do that very accurately under a situation where you're in extreme stress. So it might be an idea to download this app onto your uh, device and know they're not paying me, but it's a useful uh, uh, piece of uh, kit. So, a uh, coordinate system is a way of locating objects on the position Earth. Uh, projections, uh, plotting the position of uh, the Earth's, of uh, this point, which is on an Earth's spheroid on the flat plane on the map of a computer model, and a datum is a fixed point used as a reference for everything else. So we'll talk a little bit about all, what all of these things are. Now, unfortunately for map makers, the Earth isn't flat. Now, the Flat Earth Society may have members all around the globe. Yes, I thought that was quite funny as well, but the Earth is round and we need to be able to transfer between a flat plane which is what's used on a map or a computer system such as gis system or uh, from a spheric from a spheroid now we can make quite a lot of errors by misusing coordinate systems generally used with mislocating things so for instance the worst one i've heard of and i don't know if this is actually true was well, somebody was drilling uh, a well near the equator an oil well and they drilled south in the southern hemisphere by mistake. Somebody just got the, the number wrong. Rigs have been located on the wrong lease, where you're drilling into someone else's oil. There's uh, an oil sea field, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute, where a well was mislocated and led to a very much delayed development of what was actually quite a substantial field. Um, a UK company took over from a US company who used a different uh, coordinate system. No one told anybody. And there were four development wells drilled on the field, and they ended up in the wrong place. Very subtle, about 100 meters, so it wasn't that obvious, but it was wrong and made a problem. There was another situation where a semi-submersible rig was located over a major pi pipeline before someone actually spotted the issue, again, through misuse of a coordinate system. Exploration wells have been drilled in the wrong place, etc., etc., etc. So obviously getting it is quite important in a situation where you're potentially dealing with people's lives. So this is the example from the North Sea. Um, again, I'm not sure exactly where this was, um, but what you had was a situation where a well was drilled and they thought they drilled it to a crest, they found an oil water contact, and they thought they had a very small accumulation. Uh, but you can never get the seismic to fit. You can never get the seismic line to tie with the well. Just couldn't do it. Obviously, this was a, before the des days of pre-stack depth migration, but still, you couldn't quite get the image right. The field was deemed sub-economic, so companies sort of put it on the back burner, didn't do anything else. Now, someone else was doing a survey for a seabed survey, and they found a wellhead, and the wellhead was in the wrong place. It was resurveyed, and the real situation was this. 
you had a well which was drilled towards the flank of the field, found the contact, found the uh, the top structure. When it was resurveyed, fitted the seismic, and the field ended up being quite substantial. Certainly, bought quite a bit of value. The seismic fitted, all the geological models were completely in place. The field was now successfully developing, producing, but several years too late, therefore losing value for the people that were involved. Now they could have relinquished it, could have lost even more value if someone else had picked it up, but always worth checking where your wells are located, whether it's been done correctly. It's a very easy thing to do on land, obviously. You can just go there with a GPS uh, uh, instrument and see where things things are, particularly if your well was drilled a long time ago in the 50s or 60s where things were surveyed with theodolite. Um, offshore, a little bit harder. People tend to use magnetometers. So you need to know as a geologist, where the data has come from and what has been loaded in. So the data would include maps, either hard copy or scanned into a GIS system. Grids and other interpretation geomodeling data, which is done within a uh, GNG interpretation system, such as Landmark or Petrel or Kingdom. Well locations, well surveys, seismic data, uh, culture data, such as lease boundaries, and also GIS shape files, which you would have uh, imported. So. Things like digital elevation models, geoimages, raster files, shape files, etc. And all of these must be in a compatible coordinate system to be useful. Because if one of them has load been loaded in wrongly, it'll be several hundred meters out, which will be a bit of a problem because that will make uh, your interpretation faulty. Uh, obviously, if it plots an Outer Mongolia, unless you are working in Outer Mongolia, you can, say, you can see that there's a problem. But quite often, the errors would be hundreds of meters, a couple of kilometers, such that you can't instantly tell that there's a problem. But isn't there a global standard? Well, fortunately, no. Now, WGS84, which I'll come to later, is trying to be a global standard, but countries tend to have national standards, which helps consistency within their nation. Uh, but if you're working on the border of several nations, or if you're an international company working within a country, sometimes people don't always use the same standards. Particularly, some countries allow several different systems to be used, or different companies within a country use a slightly different projection. And when you start mixing systems, you get into trouble. So the key is to have one system which everyone sticks to. So. A little bit about coordinate transformations of software, well, you think isn't all done on the fly. Well, within something like ArcGIS, which is a dedicated GIS system, it is, but you obviously have to import the data with the coordinate system set up. Once that's, once that's been done, ArcGIS can then project the data into any system that you may choose to do and export the data in the new system if required. Um, and we'll have the coordinate system tagged alongside it. Most interpretation software, Petrel, Geoframe, Landmark, Kingdom, Open Detect, as far as I know, happy to be corrected, uh, cannot, coordinate control, cannot convert on the fly. So once a system has been set up, that's the system that you use. And it's very important to make sure that you do that. The big problem starts happening is when you start importing data, particularly where you don't know where it's been or where it's come from. Or if you do know where it's come from, but it's been imported uh, without due care and attention. For example, you export something out of IHS's Eden or Wood Mackenzie system or any other database, and you export in their default storage system, which is usually WGS84, and you're putting into a, a um, national coordinate system, which you're using within your GNG project. Now, uh, all of these things, well, Eden certainly can export it in any projection system that you like, but you have to tell it to do so. So you need to make sure of the coordinate reference system of your data, and bad mistakes can happen if you mix them. Obviously, if it's uh, something safety critical, that's just uh, drilling a well, it's probably a good idea to import to get a geodetic consultant to just overlook things. Don't cost very much, um, and they ensure that everything has been followed, that everything is kosher, and everything can be done right. So thank you very much for part one, and I'll see you shortly for part two.